Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Today I'd like to show you my Ream RT-GH-95DVLN 9.5 gallon per minute indoor direct vent tankless natural gas water heater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a tour of the unit. I'm going to show you all the hookups, where you hook up the gas and the cold water and where the hot water comes out. And I'm going to show you the inside of the unit where the water goes after it goes into the tankless water heater and I'm going to show you where the magic happens that's the heat exchangers the unit has dual heat exchangers and one of them is stainless steel and it it has condensing properties so I'm going to show you how the condensing tankless water heater uses condensing to make water heating much more efficient and I'm going to show you uh, some of the parts inside the tankless water heater that uh, may need to be replaced during the lifetime of the unit. Also, I'll show you how you can use Schedule 40 3-inch PVC for your venting. First, I'll start by showing you the bottom of the unit. The bottom of the unit is where all, all your hookups are. Your gas comes in in the bottom of the unit, your cold water comes in, your remote cable comes in, and your hot water comes out, and your condensate water comes out. So it's a very important area. And this is the gas inlet right here. This particular unit is for natural gas, and this is a three-quarter inch inlet. Uh, Ream uh, gives you a, a three-quarter inch gas valve that goes right there so you can sh shut off the gas to the unit. And next to it is the cold water supply. It's the water inlet. And again, it's, it's three quarters inch. It comes in right here. And this right here is your filter. So there's, there's the filter right there. See, it's nice and clean and pristine. This is a brand new unit. The next connection is the remote connection. Uh, Ream gives you the uh, remote and it gives you they give you uh, 10 feet of thermostat wire so the thermostat wire goes right in there see there's a little hole there that they can go through right here we have the hot water so the hot water comes out once it's heated the hot water comes out right here to your hot water supply of your house this is your condensate I'm going to show you more about this when I'm showing you the inside of the unit but uh, condensate comes out, out right here, it's a half inch and it could be like a flex line and you take that to a drain or to outside of your house. Uh, it might drip a little bit uh, now and then depending on your weather conditions and how you're using the tankless water heaters and so forth. This right here uh, also is for condensate but it's air and air can come out of here uh, when it needs to. I'll show you more about this one later as well. So these both have to do with the condensate unit. This is air and this is water. These rubber grommets right here are for hooking up multiple tankless water heaters. Ream calls it the Easy Link system. And so that's what these are for. If you just have one tankless water heater, you just leave them there like that. Whenever a hot water tap is turned on, the water enters the unit right here. This is the, the cold water inlet. Okay, so the water enters right here and that triggers a switch. And that switch turns on this gas valve. And the gas is then, then flows up to this area underneath the manifold. This is the manifold. And underneath the manifold is the burner. And the burner ignites. So we, we have the water flowing into the unit and we have the burner ignited. Now, let me show you where all the magic happens. Here we go, right up here. Those are the heat exchangers. This unit has dual heat exchangers. The one on the top is stainless steel. The one on the bottom is copper. So we have the water flowing up here, the cold water flowing up here. The burner has ignited now. It's under, underneath here. Now, the water flows right in here into the, what's called the secondary heat exchanger. The heat exchangers are uh, the heart of the unit. It's where the heat from the gas burning in the burner is exchanged for 
hot water. And this exchange rate happens in this unit at 94% efficiency. The heat from the, the gas is used to heat the hot water and 94% of the energy in that gas is used in this unit. So we have the cold water going into the secondary heat exchanger. It's stainless steel and I'm going to explain why this is stainless steel. It's very important that it be stainless steel. So it goes through here and the water gets preheated. And the preheat is ingenious. It is preheated by the excess gases from the primary heater. You see we got the burner going. We got, we got the excess gases that normally uh, leave right out the exhaust vent in, in a normal tankless water heater that isn't condensing. See this is a condensing tankless water heater. Then those excess gases that are normally expelled are used in the secondary heat exchanger to preheat the uh, water and then it, it comes back out of the secondary heat exchanger and goes into the primary heat exchanger where the water is heated rapidly. This is where the, the principal heating of the water occurs in the primary heat exchanger and as this is happening uh, more gases uh, go into the secondary heat exchanger so that the water coming in is efficiently preheated so that the water going into the primary heat exchanger has a head start. It's already, it's already uh, warm. So it makes the whole unit very, very efficient. However, these gases that normally escape in a, in a regular tankless wa hot water heater are acidic. That's why this unit, the secondary heat exchanger, has to be stainless steel. And you see, you have a condensing tube coming out of the secondary heat exchanger. This condensing tube it collects water. A typical hot water heater, the gases that escape are, are about 300 degrees. Gases that escape from this unit are going to be somewhere in the neighborhood between 100 and 150 degrees. Uh, much lower. I've heard 100, I've heard 125 degrees. Anyway, the gases are much lower. I'm sure it would vary with how hot you're, you're trying to heat your water and so forth. But the gases are are around uh, two, two or three times lower in temperature. So they go out right here, but it, it creates an acidic uh, condensate, which is acidic water. It comes out this condensate tube right here. And that condensate tube goes to the neutralization kit right here. It's a plastic bottle and it's filled with calcium carbonate. The lifespan of this unit is 10 years. After 10 years you're going to get a readout on your uh, remote. It has a, a certain number and that when you look it up it's going to say okay it's there's two of them. One of them say well your neutralization kit is about to go bad and the other one number says you have to change out your neutralization kit. This neutralizes the acidic waters that come from the secondary heat exchanger. But you don't have to change this kit out. You can just get a quart of calcium carbonate crystals. They're like little rocks. And you take this out, you dump out the old car calcium carbonate, put in new calcium carbonate, and you're set. You know, unless there's a, unless the plastic breaks or something, uh, which isn't likely. So you can actually just buy some new calcium carbonate and put it in there and your new neutralization kit will be working just fine. All right, let me show you something else. Another ingenious uh, product that Ream has. This right here is called the Guardian Overheat Film Wrap. If your, heat ex if your copper heat exchanger, your primary heat exchanger, overheats, something goes wrong and it overheats, it will burn up this overheat film wrap. And see, these are conductors. These black things in here are conductors. If they burn up, then that turns off the whole circuit. It turns off the whole unit and protects it. So this is, that's what this is. In case you open it up, you're wondering what in the world it is. It's, it's a Guardian overheat film wrap. It says right on it, do not remove or cut. Damage will disable water heater. Okay, let me tell you a little more about the manifold. Uh, here's, here's your manifold, and it has to do with something called manifold pressure. 
So if you want to use one of these units over 3,280 feet of altitude, well, you read your manual, and it's going to tell you to change one of these switches. It's, it'll be switch number three. And at twice that elevation, you would, change, you would switch on number four. Moving down from the burner manifold, we have this unit right here, and this is called the control board. This is uh, what controls all your digital readouts and the electrical functionality of the unit. If this goes bad, then you get a, a certain readout and you will need a new control board. And this, this is a, one of the parts, well everything's under warranty for a certain amount of time. You have to check your, your warranty. But uh, if this goes bad within your warranty, you just call Ream and they'll send you another one. And the way I would suggest replacing it, if you're going to replace it, is uh, take a photograph first so that uh, you know that the red jumper goes here and the white jumper goes there and the blue jumper goes there and, and so forth. Because when you change this out, you have to unplug all these jumpers and you screw this control board off, put your new control board on, and then you got to put all the jumpers back where they go. I did that once and I had uh, excellent service from the Ream Technical Service. They really helped me out. Uh, with the control board. So that's what this is right here. That's your control board. These are the hoses coming from your neutralization kit. The bigger one is for wa your water condensate. After it goes through the calcium carbonate of the neutral neutralization kit, it's just regular water and it can safely be disposed of in any drain or outside the house. The smaller one is for air. It's basically for air intake to let air into the system so that the water will flow out better. This is where the water comes into the system. And see there's two pipes right here. And underneath these two pipes are what's called a bypass valve. And this is really important to know about this bypass valve when you're cleaning this unit out once a year for maintenance. And by the way, a condensating tankless water heater is exactly the same as a regular tankless water heater for maintenance. It's about once a year you need to flush the system with vinegar. So this is what's called the bypass valve right here. And you need the bypass valve to be closed when you uh, flush with vinegar. With your bypass valve closed, the vinegar will go through the correct pipe and go through your heat exchangers. You want your heat exchangers to be cleaned out. If you don't make sure your bypass valve is closed, then there is a pipe right here. You see, that will bypass your heat exchangers. And if your bypass valve is open, your vinegar is going to go through this pipe and right out the side. And your effort to clean your lime and sediment from your tankless water heater will, will be wasted. So uh, maybe check out my video if you're uh, going to be uh, cleaning out your tankless water heater with vinegar. And I carefully go over the procedures underneath the control board right down here this this round item right down there that's called the blower fan and it blows your exhaust out of the unit and out of your house normally tanked water heaters just rely on the hot air rising this uh, additionally has a blower fan and that's what that is down there so you can make uh, you know additional right hand turns and so forth and the exhaust gases will still get out because of the fan. At the top of the unit in the middle is the flue connector which is used for the exhaust gases. Next to it is the air intake connector. Notice that both the flue connector and the air intake connector are made of PVC. This allows you to use PVC for your venting for both exhaust and intake. The vent system for this water heater is designed for use with solid core Schedule 40 PVC pipe only. Do not use foam or cell core PVC pipe. Other alternative pipe material is listed in the venting section of the use and care manual. Both the exhaust and air intake vents must be run to the outside. This appliance cannot use indoor air for operation as improper 
operation or failure can occur. You can use up to 38 feet of 3 inch PVC pipe on both the exhaust and intake. If you want to use 2 inch PVC, you can only run a max distance of 5 feet. I hope this video has been a good overview of the unit for you. In my video description, I'll put a link for the Ream unit that I've just shown you in the video, which is the Ream RTGH-95DVLN. That's the indoor condensing model. And I'll put a link if you're interested for the outdoor model. It's the same unit, but the outdoor model, it's RTGH-95XLN. That's a natural gas model. Uh, also 9.5 gallons per minute. And I'll put a link for the RTGH-84 DVLN, which is the condensing indoor unit, 8.4 gallons per minute. And I'll put a link for the RTGH-84XLN, which is also 8.4 gallons per minute. And I'll put links for the tankless water heater service valve kit. I'll put a link for the Webstone service valve kit. It's lead free, it's a three piece kit. And I'll put a link for the Ream Webstone. It's a Ream brand, but it's made by Webstone and uh, it is called Clean Brass, and it qualifies for the California codes and so forth as lead-free. Uh, so I'll put a link for that. I'll put a link for the Renai two-piece, and I'll put a link for the Watts two-piece tankless water heater service valve kit. Thanks, I hope this video was helpful.